Hi all, Lee Veras here with Phototech Tuesday. Each week I'll be posting a new video about photography, technology, art, and everything in between. Today I'm going to look at the eclipse. Yeah, I hope everybody had a great eclipse weekend. Uh, I photographed a, a, a classic eclipse sequence and uh, I'm, today I'm going to look at how I photographed it and how I assembled this in Photoshop. Bobby and I were very fortunate to have friends living in Burlington, Vermont, where we could photograph the totality, have a comfortable place to stay, avoid crowds and traffic, and return home at our leisure. Overall, it was just a fantastic experience. My goal was actually to spend as little time as possible photographing so I could experience the clip as completely as possible in person and not through a viewfinder. To that end, I decided not to bring a tripod. Instead, I just sort of sat in a lawn chair and handheld my camera throughout the experience. I opted for flexibility, capturing images of the eclipse in infrared and regular light, as well as documenting the local environment during the event. I managed to achieve everything I set out to do and had an amazing eclipse experience in the process. Boy, eclipse experience, to say that five times fast. Anyway, let's take a look at my process. So here I've, I've, uh, I've sort of distilled down my, my uh, eclipse photos into just the set that I wanted to use to create uh, my eclipse sequence. And uh, you can see the progression. This is enough uh, to get a, a decent, for my mind, a decent sequence showing the progression. And then I have a bunch of uh, different uh, Corona uh, totality shots. Um, this one down here, uh, the infrared one, is kind of interesting. Um, I was kind of thinking that maybe I could get more structure in the corona if I shot it in infrared. I'm not really sure if that's scientifically accurate or not. Uh, but this was a 590 nanometer infrared capture, so it's, it's also showing a little bit of yellow and red light. Uh, and I managed to get, you know, a fairly wide uh, corona in the, at, at this exposure. Um, and uh, when I underexposed a little bit more, that's what happened. Um, so I got a much tighter corona. I could see the, the, uh, the solar flares there. You can see kind of in the lower, right here in the, in the lower area of the, the disc. Um, but I also managed to capture those same solar flares with white light. So this is just the regular exposure. And, um, you know, actually, I'm not sure that there's all that much difference in terms of the structural detail in the corona between this one. Looks a bit wider, perhaps, than, than this one. But anyway, um, here's uh, the rest of the pictures. This is us. You can kind of see we're out there. I'm sitting in the lawn chair looking at it through our solar glasses here. Um, this shot, during the totality, I, I, uh, I captured this image with the idea that, I, that I'd be able to use this as a basis for creating uh, the, the eclipse sequence. Now, this area in the foreground, that's, that's very, um, it's, it's built up through a layer mask. So in the layer mask, uh, I opened up the exposure quite a bit, and this area is fairly noisy, so, you know, even though the sky is actually decent, all the dark areas are really noisy, and I would have to use um, the Lightroom D noise feature, the AID noise feature, and that worked, but I still got kind of blotchy uh, rent color rendering in this area. So... Fortunately, uh, anticipating that kind of situation, um, I, uh, I shot another exposure when the sun just started peeking out from behind, uh, you know, the, the, the moon in, in the, and totality went away, it got much brighter. So now this foreground area had some light, was very easy now to create a composite uh, that look like this, where I composited that foreground area from the brightly exposed version into the background area and uh, put a, a composited a, an eclipse sequence in here. So let's take a look at that uh, composite in Photoshop. And uh, you can kind of see what I'm doing here is I've, I've got the different shots 
assembled in layers here. Uh, so you can kind of see the, that all of these are separately in layers here, including this, this uh, totality, which is down here, right? Um, and these are all these are all placed in screen mode. So if we look at this, I have the layer blend mode set at screen. If we were to see it normally, you could see the whole black area around um, around the sun there. Um, so we we'll leave it in screen, and then that way I don't have to actually mask it off. It's screening over the dark sky here, so it's no problem. And, uh, and I lined all these up with a sort of temporary vector line that I created here. And uh, so you can kind of see, I would just nudge all of these individual sun shots in along this vector line. And that's just, I'm just kind of guessing at what the actual path of the sun might have been. Uh, we started photographing at around 3.30 or so. So it was in the afternoon and the sun therefore was setting. So I created this downward diagonal uh, to put the whole sequence in. I actually only photographed the first part of the sequence and then flipped those files 180 to get the ending part of the sequence. And uh, let's let's look down here at all of these. I'll turn these all off. And so here's um, the, the original shot of the totality. The sun is quite small and uh, that's kind of dropped in through a layer mask here. If I turn off the background, you can kind of see. That's really all I'm taking from that uh, totality shot, just a bit of the sky. Now what happened was, if we turn on just the bottom layer, um, I have no sunset down there, or or I should say it's not really a sunset, it's, it's the glow just outside of the shadow. Uh, so in order to put that in, I took um, the whole shot of that totality shot and blended it in color mode right here. So it's in color mode and that color trans translated over the sky uh, in the background. So you can kind of see it's, it's also desaturated the foreground color a bit, but put that, that sort of warm uh, glow into the horizon here. Uh, and then I used one more color layer here to fill in the little gaps. So uh, now we block, uh, put, I block the original totality here with this layer, and then we add all our suns on top take off that, turn off that little line, and there you go. There's my composite image. Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and hopefully this has provided some inspiration for your own eclipse photos, and perhaps you'll assemble your own eclipse sequence. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and ring the bell so you don't miss another Phototech Tuesday, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.